Hello everybody! Welcome! My name is Megan. I'm the Mood Read Queen. You are probably also Mood Read Queens. I feel like we all are. Uh, queen as in the anybody can be a queen, right? Um, but on this episode, this video, whatever we're calling it, I decided, um, I posted not too long ago a video about, um, the Unbreakable Soldiers series by Megan Dare. And I was going to talk about three gay fantasy series in that video. And then I talked forever about just that series. So without further ado, um, we are going to be talking about today the, let's see, what's the series called? I should probably know what the series is called before I mention it to you. It is the Charm of Magpies series by KJ Charles. So KJ Charles um, has written, while well, I have Goodreads pulled up here, um, writes primarily queer fiction. Some of it is, I think I would say a majority of it is historical. Um, I have only read the Charm of Magpies series, which is, is fantasy as well. Um, it features some nice magic or not so nice magic. Um, but I do have a few of her other series on my Kindle that I'm ready to read whenever I decide to. Um, so if you've noticed her work before, but maybe haven't felt compelled to read anything, maybe you're not a huge historical only person, um, and you want something else going on a little bit. Ooh, look, that, that one looks like piratey. Ooh. Um, we, we love pirates around here, but anyway, um, I would definitely uh, highly recommend this series. I do not have the series in English in paperback. Um, those covers are okay. They're fine. Um, they could be better. So I actually own the series though in two other languages. Um, so I believe I have, um, China. I just realized that my book got wet. Oh, well, um, I've got, um, I think the Thai versions, um, as well as, um, versions from Taiwan. Um, and Taiwan, I believe they speak Mandarin there as well. Um, so anyway, I thought, first of all, I thought we'd do show and tell so you can see how pretty these books are. And then we'll talk about what the series is about and why you should read it because it's just so much fun. So I believe these are the Thai versions first. So this is the first one and it's kind of annoying that this light is so bright. Let me just see if this works. Is it better? So this is the first one. A little hard to see. I'm not quite sure how to improve that situation, so sorry. Um, but that's the first one, um, The Magpie Lord. The second book is A Case of Possession. These are like very, oh, they're beautiful. And if you want to look them up online, you can probably see them a little better. And then Flight of Magpies is the third book. Um, this series also takes place in um, the world of the Tower of Magpies that has a few other books that I will mention when I talk about them. So let's, there we go. That might be too bright, who knows, who knows. So that is that copy. And, oh, that's cute. I cannot read that, read it clearly, but it's beautiful. Um, I have a thing about buying books that are pretty, which I think most people um, who buy books like to do that. Um, these I haven't put up to display yet, but I have also a different series that I have in seven languages, um, and they're displayed at my library. And if you're wondering why we're not filming in the library, it's because it needs to be cleaned and organized. So. Um, here's the same series, but I think these are, 
I could be wrong. One of these is from Thai, Thailand. One is from Taiwan. Okay, we don't know. Um, so this, there we go. That's the first one, right? Oh my God, it's so good. That's the first one. This is Lucian. Um, he is one of the main characters, Lucian Vaudry. And then this is Stephen, Stephen Crane. I love these two. I wish that there was more fan art, which is why I, when I found these editions, I like pounced on them because there's not a whole lot of fan art for this series. And I just, I really wish there was. Um, and then this is Flood of Magpies, the third book. Oh my God. They are just beautiful. Like you should just look them up because me holding them in front of you is not really doing it justice because I have a really shitty webcam in my school issued Chromebook. So, I mean, again, I probably should, but like it came with art that I'm going to have to, <laughs> I mean, it's the same thing, but oh my God. Anyway. Okay. So that's the first three books in the series. Um, they are about the same, um, same couple and that's Lucian Vaudry and Stephen Crane. And then she has, um, I think it's called the Jackdaw series, but it takes place in the overall um, Charm of Magpies world. And um, there are three books in that series. Um, the first one in that series, I believe is called Jackdaw. Let me make sure. I think actually we have, yeah, so there's Jackdaw, which, and these do overlap time-wise as well with the events of the Charm of Magpie series. So there's Jackdaw, A Queer Trade, which is a short, longer than a short story, but not quite a novella, and then Rag and Bone. So there are technically six. Um, I read them all super quickly. Um, they all come in around, I would say, 200 pages. So they're not... Um, hard reads and there's like excellent world building. So let's get into it. Let's talk about it. So, um, let's make sure I get all this right. Shall I? Okay. So these books do take place. Um, they are historical. I don't remember what year they take place in, but needless to say, homosexuality, still not a good thing. Um, in terms of you, um, you're probably not very safe at this time period. Um, and Lucian Vaudry, and I'll just, I'll hold up this copy because, what? so this is Lucian. Um, he, he is the second son, I believe, and he was not supposed to inherit from his father. Um, and his father, um, I wouldn't say he was like abusive necessarily. Um, and, and treated Lucian super poorly um, in that sense because of his homosexuality, but he definitely did not approve. Um, and it was going to expect him to, you know, get married, be the traditional uh, landowner with money. And that's not anything that Lucian wanted. Um, and, you know, he's partied it up before. So he's like not the most um, calm person necessarily. And 20 years ago, so I think he's in his thirties in this, um, 20 years ago, his dad basically said, get out. Um, and he was exiled to China and he goes to China with his friend. And I cannot for the life of me remember what his friend's name is. Um, and I'm not going to find it in here because it's not in English. So anyway, he goes with his friend, um, who is a servant with the household. Um, later he, he kind of puts two and two together and figures out that this guy is supposed to kill him, but instead they become really great friends and, um, they live in China for 20 years and Lucian very quickly realizes while he's abroad. And this is kind of all told from his, um, he, he mentions this later on in the book. We don't really see him in China. Um, that the expectations that England places upon men um, are very different um, when he is abroad 
And so he gets to live the life that he wants to, pretty much. Um, he doesn't have to worry about, you know, um, sodomy charges or anything like that. Um, I've said in previous videos that I really, I can appreciate a historically accurate story. Um, it makes it, if you, if you're wanting to escape sometimes and you know, you have a penchant for like gay romance, MM romance, you're going to end up reading some historical stories that talk about, I mean, really important, hard issues. Um, and this isn't super dark or anything. Believe me, I've read some of those. Um, but it also, I mean, the whole reason this story exists is because he was exiled for 20 years and then he's coming back after his father and brother die. And he's used to living this life that he is very comfortable in. He doesn't have to hide who he is. And he comes back to England. Everyone's buttoned up. Everything is closed door. And that's not the life that he wants for himself. Um, and I mean, I wouldn't say there's no like, oh, I mean, there's always a fear of being discovered, I guess you could say. Okay. So anyway, he comes back to England after a 20 year absence and um, his father and brother are, di are dead and his friend, I'm going to have to look it up because I cannot remember his name, um, go tries to find a shaman um, or in this case, um, a magician and or a mage um, because Lucian keeps trying to kill himself. And when I first started the book, I thought he was trying to kill himself because like of some crazy intense internalized homophobia. Um, but no, it's just like he's being compelled by something. He doesn't know what it is. And so his friend, um, and servant and like low key bestie, I guess you could say, ends up finding um, Stephen Day. And no, I think I said Stephen Crane earlier, but actually, like he's Lord Crane. So it's actually Stephen Day. Sorry. Um, and Stephen's father um, was treated pretty poorly by Lucian's father and um, holds a grudge. Um, and doesn't want to help him, but realizes that this is quite a serious situation and agrees to help him. And so, um, basically he finds like this, um, object that is compelling him. Um, and they kind of put two and two together. Well, at first they make peace with everything. Um, but then they put two and two together and realize that this is an object that he brought back from his father's house when he went to visit, um, when he, when he initially came back to England and they realized that, wait a second, if this thing was compelling you to kill yourself, your father and brother died under mysterious circumstances. They were terrible people, but something's not adding up. And so Stephen, you know, has basically, I mean, it wasn't Lucian's fault that his father was a dick um, and, and mistreated Stephen's father. So it's whatever. So Stephen agrees to help because there's no one else that he trusts um, to solve this mystery. Um, they, he works, Stephen works for, um, now I can't remember what it's called. This is like a super professional video today, guys. Um, what is the word judiciary? So this is kind of cool because there is like the regular police force and then there's like the magician, um, police force. Um, and I guess we could say Stephen Day is actually, a, it says a magical law enforcer. Um, and he, um, gets his power from like the ether basically. And so Steven is like constantly hungry. He's like this little dude. Um, you can kind of see it here 
And, you know, he's quite a bit smaller than Lucian. Lucian's a, not a small guy either. He's pretty tall. But, but Stephen's also pretty tiny. Um, and um, so Stephen agrees to help him. And so they go um, to Lucian's father's home estate. And Stephen can't feel the ether there. There's, the flow is almost completely gone. And something's wrong with the house. And he can just feel this like dark doom um, and something must be going on. And so um, there are some darker elements to this. There's definitely some darker magic um, in terms of like how the magic is working. Obviously the magic was trying to compel Lucian to kill himself. Um, you know, his father and brother died in similar circumstances, though no one was suspicious at the time. The house um, has no life force, no energy. Um, so something's wrong and they're going to figure out what it is. But also Stephen and Lucian have this sort of magnetic connection. Um, and it's not insta love, it, but it does happen fairly quickly. Um, however, it I found it as realistic as possible, honestly, because they, they recognize something in the other person. Um, and Stephen has had like fumblings and alleyways, um, one night stands, but he hasn't really had a relationship because again, he's trying to hide. And also he works the, ju the judiciary and it's super understaffed. Um, there are not enough magicians and, um, or magical law enforcers. And so he really um, doesn't have the time or the energy for a relationship. And he meets Lucian and that motivation changes for him. So it's a really short book. I mean, I don't have, again, I don't have the um, paperback in English, but like you can see that that's, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty small book. So that's the first book. The next two still are about Lucian and Steven. Um, and I'll just kind of summarize both those together. So in a case of possession, um, we've got a story about, they're like these gigantic rats, which you're like Princess Bride. Um, that's, that was my first thought. But it's um, Stephen and Lucian figuring out how to be together. Because again, Stephen is overworked. Um, he is coming into himself um, very, like he's very comfortable with Lucian. Um, they have a really cool, kind of like, so there's a physical connection, but there's also a magical connection. Um, because L Lucian works as like almost like an amplifier. And um, his ancestor was um, a magician, um, Lord Crane, because that's what a Lucian is. And um, he has cranes tattooed over his whole body. Um, Lucian does from when he was in China. And so when he and Stephen, and this might sound ridiculous, but when he and Stephen are um, having sex, the the cranes like fly between them and um, one or two permanently stay in possession of, of Stephen. Um, and he's like freaked out. Um, so the second book is kind of trying to find more of a balance because now they're together, they're living in London. Um, Stephen still lives on his own. Um, but Lucian's not sure. He thought he was going to come back to London, come back to England, settle his father's estate and get the heck out of there again. And instead he wants to be with Stephen. But what does that mean? Because what future do they have in, in this historical homophobic society? Um, and how free are they to be themselves together? So the second one is kind of, you know, Stephen um, coming out to one of his friends who works at the judiciary um, and them trying to solve an issue um, with the rats <laughs> and why the heck, why is it even happening? And then the third book, which um, there it is, um, Flight of Magpies. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Flight of Magpies. This is the conclusion to their story, basically. And there are some short stories here and there about them, but this is when it's a make or break. Stephen has to decide if he wants to stay 
working for the judici- the judiciary. Um, he's being taken advantage of. You know, he's not respected. Um, or, you know, like what does he want basically? And Lucian is kind of at the end of his rope and and trying to decide what he's going to do. Is he going to leave? But he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to leave Stephen. Um, and there are police officers who are being killed and, um, someone is painting them and then, um, you basically using that, um, to kill these police officers. And so Steven is trying to, to, to find out who that is. Um, and, and Lucian gets wrapped up in that. Um, there's a really, really cool third act kind of battle scene and I was so into it. Um, I don't want to say much more because this is a short series. Um, these three books are just, first of all, the spice level is fantastic. They have a, a really good dynamic. Um, there's definitely some, um, domination happening from Lucian's side of things. Um, and, and I like, you know, smut is great. I, if you don't like it, that's also cool. Um, you could skip over those scenes if you wanted to, because I think the story stands on its own as well. But it's interesting to see how they that works in terms of their character development and their relationship development. And um, Stephen has to make all these decisions all the time. He's in charge of so many things. He has so much pressure on him. And so when he doesn't have to think of that anymore and Lucian can just take over, it's so good. So highly recommend um, that series for sure. Again, I have not read any more of KJ Charles um, books. I I certainly mean to, I just haven't done it yet. Um, I've been kind of hung up on those books, um, clearly, since I now own them in two languages and then the third one is online. So to continue that series, you have Jackdaw, A Queer Trade, and then Rag and Bone. So, um, Jackdaw takes place, um, around the time of the third, I believe, the third Charm of Magpies book, and I'll put that kind of over here, um, and that is about this guy named Jonah, and you meet Jonah in that book, um, I wouldn't say he's a villain necessarily, but he's not necess- he's not cast in a great light in that book, um, and so excuse me. And, um, he is a magician and he is a thief and you see kind of that background, um, in the last, um, Charm of Magpies book, but this book gives you the backstory, how he came to be involved, um, in that particular story and his background, um, where he came from, and, you know, any relationships that he was in before. And he was in a pretty committed relationship with this guy named Ben, who was a police officer. And they were living together. They were in love. And then the shit hits the fan. Um, ben ends up stealing something um, heavily implicating Ben. Sorry, Jonah ends up stealing something heavily implicating Ben. And it's just... A mess and Ben ends up losing his job and doesn't have any answers and so it's interesting I, I think we all love the getting to know the villain or the person that you know you weren't necessarily rooting for and with this you get Jonah's backstory where he came from Jonah is a wind walker um, so he can um, walk on the wind um, which is a super super rare skill um, and it's kind of incredible, but there were things about himself that he never told, that he never told Ben. So this is their second chance romance, basically. Um, they spend a good chunk of it on the run, figuring out who they are to each other. And you do get to see um, appearances by um, Stephen and Lucian. So it's really great. Then A Queer Trade. This is a very, this is a short story. It's about 50 some odd pages and it's about Crispin and then Ned. And this, I really liked this. Um, it, it, 
I don't know if it's necessary to read before the second book, but I, I would definitely do it. Um, and it's about Crispin, who is, he's pretty young. I don't, I forget how young he is. Um, and he was an apprentice to a magician. And then that magician dies, I think. Um, and all of the magician's papers are sold by um, one of his family members. And Crispin freaks out because the papers um, were, they had spells, they had different like incantations, and they were all written with this very important pen um, that belonged to his uh, master. And the pen actually has a tip that's made of bone. And Crispin has his own pen. And blood magic is like forbidden. You're not supposed to use it. But Crispin was apprenticed to this guy from a young age and he doesn't know any, any other way than that. And um, he's never been able to practice magic without writing, without drawing. And so um, this is a short story that introduces Crispin and Ned, who is like this trash, what is it, what is it, waste man. And he just like collects like paper and like sells it or I don't know, whatever. And so they meet um, and it's it's not super involved. It's not a, necessarily a romance. It's more of a an introduction to those characters. Um, what well, is a romance? Because I think by the end of it, they have um, expressed their interest in each other, but you don't get to see them in that committed relationship until the like the full book. Um, and it was just super interesting to see the different magic elements that are in this world um, because it, it looks different than uh, Stephen's magic. And you realize like Stephen's friend, um, I think her name is like Ruth or something. I could be making that up. Um, but she, she uses her nose to sense magic. Um, Stephen uses his hands. Um, and so I just remember the scene that featured some um, light bondage because I think it's, is it brass? One of the metals stops like the ability to um, use magic. And so he and Lucian do some, some stuff with that. It's pretty fun. So um, anyway, so a queer trade, that is the introduction to Crispin and Ned. But the book with them is called Rag and Bone. And this is the last book in the series. I would so read more with these people. Oh my God, I love them. Um, but this is Crispin. So he's found out and he doesn't really, he's not punished really because they realize that he was an apprentice to someone who was using um, like illegal magic basically. But he is very much struggling to figure out how to use his magic when he can't use the pen. Um, that is his like blood magic. And so there is, um, there's some disappearances, I believe, or some, some weird deaths that happen. And Crispin is trying to help solve those crimes. Stephen is there occasionally. He hasn't left um, England yet at that point. Um, and, but Crispin is, he doesn't, when he's put under pressure, he breaks and he goes back to the old way of doing things. Ned has been negatively impacted by magic. Um, I believe he has kind of a tendency to magic, but he can't practice it. He has a sensitivity. And um, he's seen what it's done to Crispin. He's seen what it's done to other people. And he just is a support system for Crispin in this book um, as Crispin tries to figure out what his future looks like in terms of magic. Um, and that's basically what the book is about. Um, there's a really cool third act fight again. Um, these, these books do that really well. Battle, I guess you could say, I don't know. Um, will Crispin figure out how to use his magic without using blood magic? Um, 
you know, will you see your favorite characters again? Yes. Um, and yeah, that's it really. It's just a great series. I don't know if I sold it well enough, but it's, um, I like it because there's really good world building that's not too complicated. So like, I don't know about you, but sometimes I get overwhelmed. I don't want to get super into, um, like longer series. And this, I was able to read super quickly. Um, and I, it was easy to follow. I understood the world. Um, you got to know your characters. There were, they were really, um, action oriented scenes. They were really, um, sexy scenes. They were really sweet, vulnerable scenes. Um, there's a scene with Lucian and, um, Stephen where they've sort of been inversely affecting each other because of their connection, because they're so sort of intertwined. Um, because every time they have sex, right, the, the cranes that are tattoos on Lucian's body go back and forth between them. And, um, they're very heavily connected in a way that most people aren't. And they, then that intensifies the, what is between them. And it is, um, there's a scene where Steven ends up comforting Lucian and normally it's like the other way around. And it was just, it was really good. It was really good. And I just had a perfect mental picture of what that looked like. Um, and it was just, it's a great series. So if you've been thinking about reading KJ Charles, but you haven't because maybe straight up historical is not your vibe, this does have some pretty cool magic elements in it. And I really liked it. And in fact, I, I would, I need to go back and, and read them again because it's, it hasn't been very long, but I, I really liked them a lot. So that's it. Thank you so much and have a wonderful rest of whatever time period you're watching this in. Um, watch more of my videos if you'd like. I still pretty new. So there's not a lot of them. Um, and they cover kind of a wide range of things, but um, if you've read any of KJ Charles' work, let me know. What suggestions do you have? Do you have favorite books? Okay. Very well. Bye.